it. Let's see here. There you go. So good morning, everyone. I am Siobhan Smith, your local Microsoft and Education Learning Consultant. And today, making sure we're here for the right thing, it is going to be crochet and latch hook 101. Is that, are we all here for the same thing? Okay, there we go. And Michael, I think you're going to be my model for today. Like I started thinking about you when I figured out what we're working on. Exactly. <laughs> So, like I said, we have to keep the humor going. We're actually here to talk about Microsoft Teams, channels, and breakout rooms. Um, happily, and I think this is perfect, we have a smaller group. So, if you want to start off on mute, please do, but please feel free to continue to come off mute as you have questions while we're walking through, while I'm demoing, and while we're talking. I do want to just make sure we do some housekeeping first. So, this meeting is being recorded. You'll notice that going across the top of your screen. And I'm going to start to share out my screen now. I'm going to turn off my camera though and share out my screen. Making sure that we are all on the same page. When you're looking at my screen, you're going to notice a couple of things. First thing is that there's a conversation option so you can choose to show conversation and this is where we're going to have our chat so if you don't want to bring yourself off of mute you definitely can simply choose that conversation tab that's across the meeting options and you can type in any of your questions here i don't think raise hand is showing for you yet i'm not 100 percent sure but if you don't see it yet it is coming very very soon only one person needs to record this meeting. So when I click on these three ellipses for more actions, you'll see where you do have an option to record the meeting. But since Michael is recording it, only one person has to record the meeting and it will be made available to everyone. So since he's doing that, that's taken care of. We're good to go. You can mute yourself, still staying on that options bar, and you do have the option to turn your camera on or off. If you do have your camera turned on and you go to those three ellipses, you'll see an option for show background effects. This is just something pretty cool and pretty fun where you can put something different behind you than your living room. So if you feel like you should really be on a beach today instead of sitting here listening to me, you can put yourself on a beach. You can put yourself in a Minecraft world. You can put yourself in multiple places. So there's some that are pre-populated by Microsoft, office backgrounds, balloons, bridges, classrooms, office space, Minecraft spaces. They're adding on and soon you'll see the option to add your own custom background into your background settings. The first option you'll notice though is going to be this. This is a blur background. So I'm on the desktop version and that's why I have access to all of these different background settings. If you're on the web-based version, you won't have all of these settings. You'll only have the option to blur background. So all of these only come in desktop. If you're on the web, you'll only have a blur background option. So with that being said, we are going to jump straight into a team. If you were on the call last week, we did a quick, very quick, 101 intro to teams and we're going to be doing one later on today starting at 1 30. so if you missed last week it is recorded that recording is available to you or you can feel free to come back today from 1 30 to 2 30 and we're going to be doing another introduction to teams so i'm going to minimize my screen again and I'm going to open up the web based version. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to be showing a couple of different video features. And because I am using video with you, I need to access another account. So I'll be signed in as the other Siobhan today. So when you see Siobhan twice, they're both me. They're just different. Web based version of Teams. Again, some of those differences, I won't have all of the same background effects. It will determine how many people show on my screen. That nine, so the three by three grid has rolled out for your desktop version. In your online version, you will not have that three by three grid. So background effects, three by three grid, 
and just the overall basic stability of the desktop version is why that is the preferred. If you don't have the desktop version on your device already, a couple of easy ways that you can get to it. I can go from the web to teams.microsoft.com directly. Or if I use Office 365 and I'm on this screen where I check my emails in the morning or I go to Outlook, I can simply come straight here, open up Teams from the web. And when Teams is open on the web, and it's taking a little while to open, in that bottom left-hand corner of Microsoft Teams, you'll see what looks like a little screen with an arrow pointing down through it, and that will download the desktop version of Teams. Be it a, power, um, a PC, be it a Mac, a laptop, a desktop, whatever type of computer you have, when you go into Microsoft Teams, you choose to download it. It will recognize this type of device that you're using, and it will download the appropriate version of Teams to your device. So now the internet has decided right down in this bottom left corner, down at the bottom of that purple rail, you'll see something that says download desktop app. And that's how you can get Teams, the desktop version onto your device. You can tell the difference. If you're on the web-based version, you have an address bar at the top. If you're on the desktop version, you do not. Now let's get into a team. Again, creating teams and walking through what a team is. We'll do that again today from 1.30 to 2.30. But I'm going to choose a team that's already created. And we created an advising team. And this is one that has some examples of channels and breakouts already in use. When you think about a channel, channels run vertically and every team that you create automatically comes with a general channel. Think about watching television this morning. If I wanted to watch sports, I'm going to turn on ESPN. If I want to watch Home and Garden, I'm going to turn on HGTV. If I want to watch Columbo or something mystery related, I'm going to turn on Hallmark Movies and Mystery. Specific. If I wanted to watch a game show and the news and a talk show and the Olympics, that's very broad. That's your NBC, your ABC, your CBS. That's your general channel. So the general that every team comes with is your catch all. And once you have that channel created, which creates with every team, you have the ability to create additional channels. And this is when you're getting into very small specific purposes. That can be a work group, that can be a project, that can be an assignment or a class, or in this case scenario, it can be breakout rooms. That could be for a virtual PD, that could be for advising. The use case scenario that you determine is gonna be what works best for you. We're gonna walk through how you do it, and then I'm gonna let you all come off of mute so we can kind of talk through why you may want to do it and we can get into some individual use case scenarios and make sure it does what you need it to do. So when I'm in my team, in order to create a channel, there are two ways I can do this. I wanna find the name of my team and right over from there, I'll see that there are three ellipses for more options. Whenever you see three ellipses in Office 365 and Microsoft and Teams, click on them. There's always great stuff behind them. When I click on more options, I have an add channel right here, or I can go to manage team. If I go to add channel, it will allow me to simply type in the name of the channel that I'm description if I need to, and I can choose what the privacy is going to be on this team or on this channel. If I see everyone on the team, everybody that's a member, new people that come, come in as members, they will all have access to this channel exists and who has access to this. When I 
uh, uh, type it and I go to next, it's going to ask me to type in the names of the individuals that I want to be added into this private channel. This could be anyone that is a member of the team. So in order to be added to a private channel, you do have to be a member of that team. If I start typing in names of individuals that are in this team, they'll automatically populate and I can add them to this channel. I also have the option once it's created to go back and add members later. So that's option one for creating channels is finding the name of the team, finding the three ellipses and choosing add channel. I can also do that from finding the name of the team, finding my three ellipses and going to manage team. When I go into manage team, this is where I get a lot of control over the team as a whole, but I'll also notice running straight across the top, there's an option for channels. And when I click on channels from here, this is where I can go to add a channel as well. The process is exactly the same. I'll call this one breakout room. Two. I can put it in a description, but this one I'll leave as standard. And I want to show this channel, which means I'm making sure it shows up in this rail, automatically show this channel in everyone's channel. When I click add, this channel is created. And you notice it didn't even request for me to add individuals because this channel is open to every member of this team. I can tell when a channel is private versus a channel being public because of the lock. All private channels will show a lock next to them. Public channels will not show that lock. The only reason I can see all of the private and public channels is because I'm the owner of this team. I'm the creator of this team. If someone is a member of this team and they're not part of this private channel, they won't even see it. So it eliminates that, oh, there's something going on over here that I don't know about, or what are they doing there? And I don't know, they won't even know that it exists. Only individuals that are part of a private channel will even see that show up in the listing. I wanna go back in to kind of manage these channels a little bit more. So again, finding the name of my team, finding my three ellipses. This time we're going to go back to manage team and we're going to go over to channels. I can see here where I can choose if a channel shows for me. If I have a long list of channels, let's say I have maybe 20 channels as part of a team, I may not need to see all of them all of the time because that can become extremely overwhelming. I can choose that I don't wanna show those two channels right now. And it makes my list a little bit shorter. I still have access to them because I can always come back into manage and show them. But it does help keep me a little bit more organized and keep things streamlined because I don't have to see them all the time. If I want the channel to show for members automatically, I'm simply going to click where it says show for members, select that box, and it's going to let me know that this will make this channel visible in everyone's channel list. If not, and I'll confirm it. If I didn't select that, someone who's a member of that channel would see right below the last one that's showing hidden channels and they'd be able to click on that. That does not show them private channels. That just shows them public channels that I have not made visible yet. And now I can say confirm. I can also go on over, see which ones are private because they have a lock, which ones are public or standard because they have a globe. And let's say I wanna work on one of my private channels, breakout one. I see three of these, whenever I see them, I know there's good stuff behind them. Click on them for more options. And this is where I can go to add members to a private channel. I can even get into just managing this channel editing this channel. If I'm a member of it and I need to leave this channel, I can do that here as well. I can turn on channel notifications. So if I wanna receive alerts for when things happen in this channel, I can do that here as well. When I go into manage channel, this is where I can add members. Simply by clicking on add members and starting to type in their names, they do have to be a member of the team. So remember, if you're doing a private or a public channel, the only individuals you can add are individuals that are a part of the team. I can also see analytics per channel. 
So I'd be able to see how many users, I'd be able to see how much they've been posting, replying, if there are any app mentions or reactions, and I can see on what days they're active. Especially in K-12 higher ed, just in education in general, data is one of the things we're most driven by. That's one of those things that we need a lot of. So being able to access analytics on a channel by channel basis, seeing if I have 13 users, seeing how many posts, if they're replying, if they're reacting, if I see a pattern that on certain days of the week, they're not engaging as much as they are on other days. I appreciate that and that helps me build and better whatever project it is I'm working on. So analytics lives under managed channels and we'll go through all of this again and this is being recorded so you can always rewatch this. Outside of analytics in managing my channel, I can go into hey, Devon, settings. Devon. Yes, sir. So, so I'm going to have you call for a second. For a second. Okay. Uh, so, um, some, some links. links. And I'm trying, I'm trying to get to top people top other top 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 to join. Top. Yes, sir. Yeah, just give me one second. Oh, look, the room has grown since I was last here. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. So give me a second here. Yeah. No problem. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Am I on the right one now? Yeah. Are you here for channels and breakout uh, rooms uh, with Microsoft yes, Teams? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Ma you're in the right place. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We have a lot of people who are trying to get onto this one, so I believe they are switching over now. Okay, perfect. Okay. Welcome back, Robert. I remember you from last week. Welcome, welcome. How are you? I'm Hello. Good, yourself. good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I see everyone's getting themselves into this room. And good then morning. we will. Good morning. We'll go ahead and we'll kind of review. We had just gotten started with teams and breakout rooms, but not so deep in that we can't go back and play catch up and make sure that we cover everything that everyone needs to know to make this a great session and to get you all started with using channels. And because I'm sharing out my screen, this may look a little bit inception like to you. You'll notice that you're kind of looking at me, looking at you, looking at me, looking at you, and you're seeing yourselves on the screen and you're getting to see the three by three grid that is rolling out in Microsoft Teams right now. So you can see nine people on screen at a time. They're working on it that by the summer, at end of summer, so let's let's say this end of summer slash mid fall, it will be a seven by seven grid. But right now, because I am in the desktop version of Teams, it is a three by three grid. And James, you're getting to take up more space than the rest simply because it's an odd number of individuals who have their cameras turned on. So you get the, the block of recognition. And how it determines who is on the screen just as people are joining to kind of go over that. Based off of who has turned their mic on or off or who has come off of mute most recently, that determines who pushes up to the screen and the individuals that you see on the screen. And while I'm showing out my screen, and we're gonna go more into this in the Teams 101 session that we have scheduled for this afternoon, but I can also choose if they're individuals that I wanna pin so that I see them on the screen. I can just hover over someone's initials in one of those little circles at the bottom. So let's say I'm not sure who. Von Perkins. 
If I wanted them to be on the screen, I would just hover over their name, right mouse click, and I have an option for pin. And when I choose to pin them, you'll notice that they now take center screen. And I can go ahead and I could pin nine people on my screen if I knew that there were nine individuals that I really wanted to look at in my three by three grid. So you do have some control over what you see on your screen. This does not turn that person's camera on, so it's still up to them if they want their camera on or not. But if these are the individuals that you do want showing on the screen, I can choose my nine. You'll notice there's that little circle with 44, 43. These are the other participants that are in the meeting. So if I did want to pin one of them and they're not showing, I would simply find that rail, which has not moved yet. It's your options bar that shows up in the middle of your screen. Click show participants. And now I can see the list of everyone that's in this call. And if I wanted to pin one of them, I would simply find their name, hover over it, three ellipses show up, and I can pin them from there. So if there's ever a person that you want pinned on your screen, but you think they're kind of stuck or hidden in that plus number, simply go to that rail that's showing across the lower bottom portion of your screen, your options bar. You can show or hide your participants in a meeting. And from there, I would simply find the person that I want to pin. And now I can pin them to my screen. And now you'll see I have nine in the center of my screen. If I ever want it to go back to normal, I can just start to unpin people from my screen. And there we go. And now it's back to the individuals who most recently came off of mute in your traditional screen. And we still have people coming in, so we'll give it another couple minutes. And then when Michael gives me the go, we will get started. Well, I have a few more people coming in. No problem. Yes, yeah, Siobhan, we'll start in about two minutes. Okay. I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Can the individual unpin themselves? They cannot unpin themselves. So one of the things that's happening is I'm sharing out my screen so you see exactly what I see. If I wasn't sharing my screen and I chose to pin four people, they're only pinned for me. They're not pinned for everyone who's on that call. So everyone can choose their own people that they have pinned, but you cannot unpin yourself because you really don't know if you're pinned on someone else's screen. And I do see you all must have the hand raise feature because I have individuals raising their hands. Appreciate you guys' patience. Uh, I think it was a mix up on the links uh, when we sent it out, and that's all attributed to my fat fingering. So uh, appreciate you guys' patience and helping to figure this thing out. And I guess what was confusing is that we had people on the call when we started, so we thought everything was all good. So that being said, Siobhan, you can show us all yours. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Let me make sure I'm mute. I am. And I apologize. You all may hear some background noise throughout this. Um, my community has decided apparently that 10 a.m. is a great time to do all of the to do around our apartments. And I have a dog that hates <laughs> the sound of mowers and different things like that. So if you hear my 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 broke best friend. 
that's going to be my dog barking, letting us know that they're trimming a little bit close to the door. Um, just to get us started, we are going to be talking about channels within Microsoft Teams and then doing things like breakout rooms with those channels. This session is being recorded. Michael is recording the session. So the great thing with Microsoft Teams is if one person is recording, everyone else does not need to be recording. It only needs to be recorded by one person and that makes it available to all. A little bit of housekeeping. I am going to ask everyone to make sure that they stay on mute until the end where we'll have some time for questions and answers. You can find the mute. I'm going to minimize this screen and move it up so that your options bar is not blocking me showing my options bar. This options bar that shows up on your team screen, you'll notice what looks like a microphone. That is how you can mute yourself. So we will kindly at the end for questions and answers. If you have a question and you think you may forget it and you just really need to get it out right now on that same options bar, you'll notice something that looks like a little chat bubble. It says show conversation. You can simply click on that and it will open up a meeting chat and you can type your questions there. I'll make sure to get to those at the end or we have a guest. I believe she's still on the call, Miss Irisha Johnson, who is another Microsoft learning consultant. She's based in Texas. So, Irisha, I'm going to ask if you can just be checking the chat and if there's something that's really quick and easy to answer, if you can do that for me. I appreciate it. And then we'll still make time towards the end. Okay, no problem. Good morning, everyone. Yes, perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Now, let's jump straight in. If you were here last week, we did our introduction to Microsoft Teams. So, today's session. This session is just going to be focusing on breakout rooms and channels. If you want another intro to Teams, we're doing it again today at 1.30. So I'm going to go into Microsoft Teams, and this is my web version that I'm working out of now. And I'm just going to create or choose a team that I'm already a member of so we can show how breakout rooms and how channels work. I'll choose this one, just a random team that I'm a member of. Actually not, that's a bad one to choose. So I'll choose this one, a random team that I'm a member of. If you remember from our Teams 101, your channels run horizontally in your team. So whenever you're a part of a team, you'll notice that channels are going to run horizontally and they will always have a general channel with every team you create. This comes standard. General is your catch-all channel. This is your ABC, your NBC, your CBS. This is your network, your broadcast television. This may have a game show, a talk show, a soap opera, the Olympics. It could have anything. That's your catch-all. But you do have an option within Microsoft Teams to create other channels. And that's when you're going to be getting into more like your cable channels your very dedicated channels. If I want to watch sports, I turn on ESPN. If I want to see Home and Garden, I'm turning on HGTV. If I want to see Mysteries, I'm turning on Hallmark Movie and Mystery Channel. That's what I'm thinking about as we start to create other channels. These channels could be work groups. They could be your projects that you're working on. They could be departmental. If you're using this in a classroom setting, it could be project based. It can be unit based. You can break up students into groups, whichever way your brain kind of works it through. We can do channels for that. There's two ways to create channels within a team. The first way is whenever I'm in a team and I see the title of that team in that rail, I see that there are three ellipses for more options. Whenever you see three ellipses in Office 365, click on them. There's great stuff behind them. And I will see that I can manage my team. So you can always go to manage your team. And when you go in to manage a team, you'll have an option for creating channels. Another place, in case you're not on that screen, let's say you're just on your regular team screen because you have grid view. And we'll talk about this at our 130 session is I can find a team, click on those three ellipses, 
and our managed team is there. So just depending on what view you have for your teams, you can either find three ellipses if you're in block view, which is gonna be up in your upper right corner, and you'll see manage team there. If you're in a team and you're in the list view, I'll see three ellipses and manage team is there. So it just depends on which view you're in. I can click on manage team and across the top of manage team, I have an option for channels. When I click there, I can add channels. I will simply title my channel. So we'll call this one Team 101. I can put in a description that's optional. I do need to choose the privacy of my channels. I have two options. One is standard, one is private. If I say it's going to be a standard team or a standard channel, everyone has access to this channel. Across the board, as long as you're a member of that team, you have access to this channel. You can do private channels when that's turned on within your organization, and that allows you to add only specific people to that channel. They still have to be a member of that team, but it's only specific people to that channel. So we'll start off with a standard channel and click Add. It tells me that it's adding this channel, and you'll notice now that it shows up in that far left rail list of channels. So that's one way. Find your three ellipses, going into Manage Team, and going to Channels. The other way to add a channel is simply by finding the name of your team. Still clicking on those three ellipses because there's always great stuff behind them. And you'll see the second option is simply to add a channel. And it's the same process. I would type in the name of my channel. I could put in my description and I can choose add. You'll notice there's a little box here that says automatically show this channel in everyone's channel list. All of the channels are showing up for me because I'm the person that created this team. But if I don't have this selected, it won't show up for other individuals that are part of this team. They'll have something that says hidden channels on their list of channels. It will say hidden channels, and it would be a little drop down that they have to click in order to see the channel that I added unless I have that box selected. So if you automatically want that channel to show up for someone, make sure you select that box that says automatically show this channel in the channels list. You have a few more options for managing channels that you've created and two easy ways to get to manage your channel. I can click on those three ellipses for more options, go into manage my team, go, over to channels and choose from here which channel I want to manage and find the name of it so I can find breakout one, breakout two, breakout three. These are all the channels that I've created. Follow it all the way over to the far right where I see those three ellipses. Click on there and I have an option to manage my channel. The other way I can manage a channel is to click into the channel that I want to manage. I see three ellipses at the top, and I can go here to manage my channel as well. Those are two quick and easy ways to get into channel management. You'll also notice that I can turn on channel notifications. So if I want to be alerted when something happens in this channel, I would turn that on. I can get a link to this channel. So if I want to email out a link that will bring someone directly to this channel, I can share that out as well. I can delete this channel. I can edit this channel, which means I can change the channel name. I can even get an email address that is directed specifically toward this channel. I will say this about email addresses for channels within Teams. They are really, 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 really long. So if you ever think about getting a channel email address, I think of it as something you may just want to have emails forwarded to this channel. And that's why you use this email address. If you'll notice very, very rarely is someone going to type in to send an email to oa2c848f.usmie.com at 
that's long. That's really long. But this is ideal if I have rules set up for my email that if someone emails me with this information in the title, it forwards it to this email address, making it accessible to everyone that has access to this channel. So that's some of the reasons you may want to use channels. You'll also notice that each channel gets its own dedicated post space, its own dedicated file space, and I can add tabs. Using files and all that you create gets its own dedicated post, its own dedicated files, and its own dedicated tabs. And as I go through these, and let's imagine I'm in a, a classroom setting. Hey, Individual. We're, we're losing you. What's that? Are we good? I we were losing we're you. Yeah. Okay, am I back now? Yes. Okay. So going back into my team and thinking about what I want to do, especially in a classroom setting, if I'm using channels and I have these channels set up that I've broken my students into groups or I've broken them up into projects or assignments. When I go to manage my channel, whichever way I get there, be it going up to the three ellipses within a channel or by going into manage my team and then going to manage a channel from there. Those are your two ways. I want to go into manage my channel and I'll know this will show me how many users I have added or how many users are actively using this channel. If they've been posting, if they've been replying, how many mentions are being mentioned in this channel or reactions and I can see the engagement so I can look at different days of the week. And I can notice if someone has been posting, if there have been replies going on. I love this as an educator because I can say, it looks like every Tuesday, there's not a lot of engagement or an activity. So let me rethink what I'm delivering and how I'm working with my class on Tuesdays to make sure they're engaged more within this team. So you do get analytics by channel, just an extra little bonus, something so that you know that it's there. Within managing your channels, you also have some settings. This is where you can choose if individuals can at mention, much like social media, if you at mention someone in a channel, depending on what their alerts are, it can send them an email or it will just do a pop up on their screen. I can choose on a channel by channel basis if I want them to be able to use GIFs or stickers or custom memes, i.e fun stuff, or we can turn all of the fun stuff off and I can change the permissions that each person has on a channel by channel basis. So do I want them to be able to delete their messages? Do I want them to be able to edit their messages? Do I want individuals that are a part of this channel to be able to create, update or remove tabs? These are controls you have on a channel by so that's one on one. Now we're going to get into doing breakout rooms in these channels. And when we think of breakout rooms by channels within a team, we're thinking about wanting to have meetings with smaller groups so we can separate everyone up into a breakout room. I'm going to start in breakout room two to create a meeting, i.e. breakout. I simply want to click into the channel and for me, I have this option for meet that shows up in my upper right hand corner. If you don't see it in your upper right hand corner, it may be all the way down to your bottom rail beneath your start a new conversation. 
But for me, since it's here, I'm going to click on meet. When I click on meet, it's going to open up. Hi, everyone. My camera is going to turn off and it's going to open up a meeting and I'm simply going to say meet now. This option. So individuals that are a part of this meeting will have those same options. They'll be able to share their screen. They'll be able to record. You can raise hands. You can see who all is in your meeting. People can have their cameras on or off or they can mute themselves. So I have one meeting going on in this breakout room. I'm going to go back over to my team. I'm not going to exit out. I'm just simply going to go back and select teams from that far left rail. You'll notice that this meeting is still going on. It's been going on now for 27 seconds. That means anyone in this team can simply go and join into this meeting. Now for breakout room three, and these are just channels that I've created. I'm going to click on breakout three. I'm going to follow the same procedure. Click meet. Second time, turn my camera off again. Choose meet now. And it's going to start a meeting just like it did the last time. And you can do that for channel by channel by channel by channel. So let's go from the beginning. I'm going to hang up this meeting and recap it just in case someone missed how to create channels. So I did hang up that meeting. I'm going to go back to where I see the name of my team, three ellipses, add a channel. This is gonna be breakout one. If there was a specific purpose behind this, I would put that here. If there was going to be a specific need for that channel, I could put that in my description. If I'm gonna break apart my class, I may call this one red team. Whatever it is I'm using as titles, that's going to be my channel name. So we'll do breakout red. I'm going to make sure it's available to everyone. Click add. I now have a new channel showing up as part of my team. I'm going to add another channel. This one's going to be breakout. And, and, and I might have that you, you can't hear me. Let me close some apps because it may be a little much running on my screen at one time. So we're going to close some things out and try and conserve some resources and see if this helps. I'm going to turn off incoming video. And if someone can let me know if they can hear me and if my screen is moving a little bit better now, I'd appreciate it. Are we good? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. You can you the still see me? Frozen. The screen is still frozen. Okay, it just moved. Okay, perfect. So I did see a question asking, how do you move from channel to channel without ending the call? And that is one of the things that makes a breakout room in Teams ideal is I never have to exit in order to create. So I would just move from room to room. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go into my Microsoft Teams. And I'm going to go into a team that I've created. And I'm simply clicking on those three ellipses again, adding a channel. Breakout red, adding it. We'll do another one for adding another channel. This is going to be breakout blue. 
adding it, and then we'll add breakout yellow. And add. Okay, so we'll start off in Blake breakout blue. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna start my meeting. Did we lose Siobhan? I think so. Yeah, let's give her a few seconds to see if she'll come back in. I'll send her something right quick. Uh, I've lost her too. Yeah, I'm about to shoot her an email. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Irisha, the Houston Area Microsoft Learning Consultant. Um, I just want to come on right quick while we wait for Siobhan to work through her technical difficulties and um, thank you guys for being patient with us this morning. Um, Siobhan will be right back. Hey, do you have her number? No, okay. I'm sorry, that was totally my fault for All trying right. to demo in the same account that I'm on our call in. Gotcha. That was totally me. So that is why I was using my web-based version. And that is an example of what will happen when you are switching between calls. So it did not disconnect me. It didn't disconnect me from the call I have with you all. It simply put me on pause back to our call just by clicking on that. you again. Okay, and I think my internet has just decided today is not going to be a good day. I'm closing everything else I have going on on my computer down and seeing if that will help. I don't have anything else open. Am I back now? Or I reach no. you if you're we see on, nothing on the screen. You just see RS showing up on the screen or nothing at all. Uh nothing. We just see, I just see the people our people. There we go. Now Are I we see. back to yeah, displaying? All right. yeah. So I truly apologize for this. Me and my internet are not being best friends today. Irisha, if I do go out again, and I hate asking you this because I know you signed up to be on here and just listen, and I appreciate it, but if you could just fill in any blanks for channels, hopefully I won't blink anymore and everything will run smoothly. But just in case, you all will be in the very well-prepared hands of Irisha Johnson. So now we should be back to seeing my screen with breakout rooms showing in a team. <coughs> It's easy to navigate when you have your meetings going on because you're not going to be hanging up from a meeting. So when I join a meeting, all I do, because I don't want to hang up, I don't want to end my meeting room. I just go over to that far where it says teams, click back into a team. It pauses that current one for me. Everyone else can still be in that meeting, no problem. I'm just on pause. And now I'm able to choose another room. And now I'm able to set up a breakout in that room. And I can do this ongoing. We always suggest that you have one person, maybe in your classroom or if you're doing a virtual PD day, that is in charge of just setting up the rooms in advance. That's the person that just goes and starts these meetings. And then everyone else can join them. And for a participant to join when they're a part of this team, 
All they do is navigate to the channel that they're supposed to be in at that time. They'll see this nice purple rail that says join. They just click on that button. That puts them into that meeting. As the person who's organizing it, I can easily switch between all of my breakout rooms right here from these two blocks. And if I have four meetings, it will be four blocks. And when I click play, it brings me back into any of these meetings. If I want to check on that one, now I can hear what's going on in breakout two. I've checked on breakout two. I want to check on breakout three. I simply click play and now I'm back into breakout three. So it's really easy to navigate between all of the breakout rooms that you have going on at any one given time without having to end a call. Now, if you are in that position where a meeting is over and you want to kick everyone out of this meeting, this meeting is done. You're going to find those three ellipses for more actions and you're going to choose end meeting. If you hang up, that just removes you from the call. So the same way students like to gather in our classes once they're over, if there's still five or six people in a breakout room at the end and I just choose to hang up, all it does is remove me. They still can continue that call on. I click those three ellipses for more actions and I choose end me. And it reminds me that this will end the meeting for everyone. If I'm happy with that, I'm good to go. I simply click end. That meeting is ended for everybody. You'll notice it doesn't even show up in that channel anymore. That meeting is done. There's no button for them to click on to join. They are out. I can do the same thing with breakout two. When I'm done with it, I'm going to click on those three ellipses and I'm going to choose end meeting. It reminds me that this ends it for everyone. I'm happy with that. I click end and you'll notice that it's done. The camera's no longer showing up there. And when I click into that channel, it's not showing that bar for anyone to join. If you did choose to record your meetings though, a bar would show up where individuals could go back and watch that recording from directly within that channel. And I did see some questions before my screen and my computer. So I'm, so I'm coming back into our meeting and you'll notice those other calls that I started, they're still showing up here. So this was me when I thought you all could see me. This was how I ended up disconnected from our call was I started other calls within my team and you'll see they're just on hold. So if I ever wanted to go back to one of them, I would simply click play. If not, I can just hang up from all of those calls. And now I'm only on the call with you. So we're gonna look at some questions and answers and then I see some hands raised. Can I create groups and all in a group and then add all in a group to a channel? So it depends on how it's set up in your organization and how you created the group. If it's a contact list, no. If they're a member of a an active directory group, they have to be a member of that whole team, then yes, but they do have to be a member of a team, of that entire team for you to add them into a channel. How do you record what's happening in a breakout room without being in it all the time? Once you start the recording, even if you exit out of the room to go somewhere else and manage one of those other rooms, that recording continues on. Are you able to record? Yes, while you're in another session, you are able to record that session. All of those recordings will then live in the stream, Microsoft stream, that's where all of your recordings are stored, of the person who starts the recording. And then it's up to them after the session is over, after the meeting is over, after the breakout is over, if they want to share those recordings out, outside of just the individuals who are a part of that. And someone has their hand raised, and that is going to be Annie. If you want to come off of mute and ask your question.
Is that you coming off of mute? So are there any other questions? And I apologize, this one was a little bit shorter, but we are going to do this one again at a time that is not at 9.30 a.m. on a Monday morning after a weekend during quarantine. Um, we'll make sure to do some more channels and breakout room sessions. We do have a Teams 101 session coming at noon. And yes, we will definitely be scheduling another breakout training. Will we receive a link to the recording for this one? Yes. So, yes. There we go. Uh, I think, uh, go ahead and explain how the recordings work. If they're part of the recording, they have access to it, right? Do I have to send them a so, link? Yeah. <laughs> you do not have to send the link. So since everyone is a part of this call right now, when this call ends and the recording is over, you're going to be in Microsoft Teams. From within Microsoft Teams, you're going to want to navigate to that far left rail and choose chat. When you click on chat, you'll notice that this meeting shows up as a chat option for you. It's going to be, it goes in order of your most recent meetings. So because this is my most recent, it's kind of living right here on the top right now. When that video recording is done, it will show up in this chat and you can just click back to this chat. I would say give it maybe 20 minutes for everything to process. You can click back here and you'll be able to find that video. Um, another example of that is, I think this was our meeting from last week. And you'll notice that it was recorded. And when you were in this recording, I just went back to the chat. At the end of it, you'll see the recording lives here. So you can always navigate back to a chat for a meeting. And that meeting recording will live in this chat and you can access it from there without having to wait on Michael to send out a link. I want to apologize to everyone for the uh, mix up on the uh, on the meeting uh, links. So if you plan on participating in the uh, teams training later on this evening at 1.30 and you use the um, the email that we sent out, of course, you will be clicking on the link that is for the 930 uh, session. That's actually the 130 session. So we might try to get something out to uh, try to lessen the confusion on that, but uh, I have to fall on the sword on that. You know, sent the uh, wrong links. I should have just had a link, the same link for all the sessions. That's how I should probably should have processes. So, you know, so if I'm not here next week, y'all know what happened. You went on vacation? Is that <laughs> you just went on my team's training? <laughs> yeah, it would be a forced <laughs> vacation. <laughs> no, it would be to relax and reset. That's all that would be. <laughs> Thank you for calling it into existence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate everybody because uh, this one is one that everybody had a lot of questions uh, about. So uh, hopefully this now, was a help to you guys. Go ahead. As Yet, and Kathy was asking if there's a Microsoft guide on this training. There is not a definitive guide on channels as breakout rooms for this training, like just that Microsoft has created. There's some different links to websites that touch on this, and but nothing fully built out. I will make sure to drop some links into that chat. All right, does anybody have anything else? Uh, yeah, Mr. Jones, just want to say thank you for putting this on. Thank you for sending the emails. Thank you for straightening out the information. Yeah, we, we just appreciate you uh, coordinating all this because this Man. is a lot to do. It's a lot to do. Uh, I got, like I said, we got a lot of stuff going on. No, no excuses, but uh, we can't do it without you guys as well. So. I appreciate whoever it was. I think that was Jennifer Town saying, uh, is anybody leading this meeting? <laughs> so the confusion came in is because we did have uh, participants on this call. So I didn't think it was anything wrong. So thank you guys for the uh, the uh, patience. So 
Uh, I sent you guys the link for the uh, 130 meeting. If you want to uh, take note of that, it will still be residing in your chat uh, for this meeting. If you just want to uh, copy it and paste it somewhere, I'll make it a, a meeting for yourself. So with that being said, Siobhan, and what's your counterpart's name again? Irisha. Irisha, you know, I don't want to leave you out because, you know, I'm getting hate. <laughs> You know, no worries. Hey, Siobhan, before we leave right quick, I just saw a question pop up. Um, I wanted to see if you wanted to sh um, show them how to do this. I don't know if you can see. How do you show a video in YouTube so that your students can hear it? OK, so this is going to be an interesting one. I can't show it in this meeting because it happens when you share your screen. So when you choose to share your screen, and that's that sharing tray from your options bar, when you're choosing which screen you want to share, right above in that upper left-hand corner, it's going to say include system audio. You want to make sure that you click include system audio. And I'll try it in a meet now, even though I'm going to be on the web version, to see if it lets me show that. Okay, it signed me out. Um, so you will want to start when you're starting your team's meeting, clicking share system audio. If after the meeting has started, you realize you did not do that, take your cursor all the way up to the top of your screen and you should see what looks like a little drop down showing on my screen now where it says presenting. If you're looking all the way to the top, give yeah. control and then there's going to be this little box between yeah. give control and presenting and that will let you share your system audio. And that way an individual or whoever you're presenting to will be able to hear any sound that's in a YouTube video or a PowerPoint presentation or anything like that. So Cynthia, I hope that helps. Yes, it does. Okay, yes, ma'am. Now Siobhan, let me ask you this. Uh, yes, sir. Let me uh, ask you this. Uh, I'm not sure if you want me to uh, share your uh, contact information if they have any questions yes. or should she want to channel it through me. It's up to you. It's, I'll drop it in the chat yeah. in, just in case. I did just drop my email address in the chat in case anyone has any questions. It's Siobhan.Smith at USMIE.com. And of course, you guys know that uh, David Bailey is our uh, resident uh, expert uh, on uh, teams, and he's been uh, an integral part in helping us get this off the ground. Mm -hmm. He's the one that introduced it to me. So I was a Zoom fan until he uh, showed me what this could thank be. Thank you, David. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Uh, we'll see some of you guys at 1.30, uh, of course, using the link that I just included in this uh, this chat session. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You all have a good day. See some of you later. Bye-bye. You too. Have a great day. You too.